we will get the latest official job figures, uh, job vacancies this morning. But we know certain sectors are really struggling to recruit staff. Uh, ben is now on a housing development in West Yorkshire to tell us more. Morning to you. Yeah, good morning to you both. Uh, we're looking at the shortage of workers in all sorts of industries because as well as the jobs figures, the unemployment figures that we'll get later, we'll also expect to hear about the number of vacancies. And there's a real problem in certain industries right now about getting the staff that they need. And it's particularly important in the construction trade. There's a real shortage of certain key workers and that's causing a problem to build places like this. So let me explain some of the reasons that, that why, why that might be the case because well as the UK left the European Union it's a lot harder to get staff from overseas they now need to apply for visas to work in the UK and that's caused a shortage of EU workers but there's already been a shortage of workers in certain key industries already we've been talking a lot on the program about food shortages in supermarkets and that's because of a shortage of HGV drivers so in those industries that's a big problem and of course, as the economy recovers from the pandemic, there's been a big reopening. So that's meant that there's been a big push for workers to get back to work in certain industries all at the same time. So it's created a bottleneck effect that's meant that there's been a real lack of key workers in key industries. So what are the implications for places like this? Well, let me introduce you to Steve. He's the managing director here at SB Home. Steve, morning to you. Look, um, talk to me about the shortage of workers because you're not particularly affected on this side, are you? But as the industry as a whole is lacking certain key skills. Yeah, yeah. We're not actually directly affected. We're a local house building business, well established in the Cone Valley, which is part of Huddersfield. Um, but we are fully aware there is a national shortage and it's more affecting some of the cities where people have big contracts, where they need it, or work as quickly. But we sort of don't have them real issues here at the moment, but we are aware, yeah. What sort of skills are lacking? I know brickies is always a problem isn't yeah. it but are you short of things like electricians roofers tilers where are the shortages at the moment the, the shortage is definitely bricklayers skilled skilled bricklayers carpenters plumbers um, but again it's not something that's directly affecting us yeah. at this moment in time what are the issues in terms of training new people? Because I know a, a, an ageing workforce is a problem in construction, yeah. isn't it? A lot of people have been doing this for a very long time and there's not as many people coming up through the system. Yeah, that, that, is, a, that is an issue for us. I mean, we've got guys in the 60s working for us and they're still working for us very well. But the um, the, re the real issue is getting the young people coming forward right. in the industry. Yeah, but I mean, I'd like to see personally uh, more women coming into the industry. Yep. I've got three daughters, so I would actually encourage women to come into the industry. I think there's an opportunity. Is enough being done to encourage younger people to consider a career in construction? Um, no, I don't think it is. I think it could be done more. I think it could be made, made, made to look more attractive. Mm. Um, it offers good long-term salaries, long-term security, um, in working in what, it, what is a good um, industry and well-paid. And a lot of people in the pandemic may have gone away and thought about setting up on their own, doing something yeah. for themselves, using the skills that they've got. And I'm thinking particularly electricians and plumbers. Do you find that they're then coming to you and saying, rather than working for you, You've got a subcontract. Yeah, it, again, that's not really happening with us. We've got a, a fairly loyal workforce, but right. I know that is a factor. And I know people have, over the last 12 months with the, with the pandemic, taken away, um, they've had little cash windfalls from the government, which right. has actually worked really well for them. And I think they've gone on and used that and little DIY jobs. And, and I think that is, that, is having, uh, that is having a small effect. Uh, well, Steve, for now, thanks very much. Really okay, nice to see you. We'll chat more a little later. Um, and look, on this site here in Huddersfield, they're building 18 of these. Four of them are already sold, so they've got to crack on and make sure that they get finished. Um, we'll show you some of the glorious views at the back of these houses a little bit later when hopefully the weather gets a little better. But uh, as we said, we'll get those official jobs figures at 7 o'clock this morning. They'll tell us the rate of unemployment, how many people are out of work, and it'll show us how the economy is recovering from the pandemic. But also, crucially, we'll get those vacancy figures that tell us just how many jobs are out there and whether, crucially, there are the right people to apply for those jobs. So more details at 7. Very good, Member. See you then. Hello, this is Breakfast with Louise Minchin and Charlie State. Um, it's 8.30. We'll get latest official figures on job vacancies this morning, but we do already know that certain sectors are really struggling to recruit staff. Um, ben is on a new housing development in West Yorkshire to tell us more about that and do some building as well, I think. Morning. 
<laughs> Good morning to you. Yeah, we've already had those figures uh, out at seven o'clock this morning. And what they tell us is that the unemployment rate has fallen very slightly as the economy recovers from the pandemic. But it tells us that there were more than a million vacancies, job vacancies in the month of July. That's a record high. And testament economy let's come back from uh ben the builder uh someone <laughs> the builder. i think what's happened is that someone's you think someone's put a nail through the through the cable you're think so that's what's upset. Happened? Ben, <laughs> we're gonna give it we're another try, try again i can hear you are you there again ben we can see you can you hear us no yes no i'm here carry uh, on can you yeah we're back we hope yeah, good. Uh, let me explain a little bit about why some of those workers maybe perhaps are uh, not able to be on sites like this and there's a shortage because, uh, well, EU and the Brexit uh, withdrawal agreement meant that there are new rules for EU workers that would be coming to the UK. They might need to get visas, for example, so that makes it a bit harder. That's led to a shortage. There's also been a shortage already of things like HGV drivers, and we know that was caused uh, shortage of, of things like food on supermarket shelves. So there were already problems before the pandemic. But as the economy opens up again after the pandemic, it's meant there's been a bit of a bottleneck. That lots of industries looking for lots of workers as they get back up and running and that's led to a shortage. So huge problems uh, for business. Uh, and those latest official figures that we've had this morning do give us a sense of where some of those vacancies may be and why there is a shortage in things like construction. But there are also big uh, concerns about how long this will last and whether the economy will start to kind of calm down and things get back to a bit more normality. Uh, as the economy recovers. Well, let me introduce you to Kate, who runs a recruitment firm. Uh, Kate, nice to see you. Good morning. Look, talk to me about why there are these problems, because uh, in some industries, real shortages of workers, real shortages of skills, and that could cause problems for not only things like construction, but in hotels and hospitality, real problems across the board. Absolutely. I think if anybody's on holiday at the minute, you see lots of um, people not being able to go to capacity in hospitality because of a lack of, of staff. And there's lots of different reasons reasons why that's happening you know whether it's EU workers not being able to come back is more complicated furlough has been an amazing scheme and we really needed it oh. but actually now it is hampering that job market and security people are thinking well what's going to happen with the pandemic Do, is it over are we going to have another lockdown people don't want to move in an uncertain market so we've got a real kind of almost a candidate market that's not happening um, and the fact that people aren't moving is a real problem, isn't it? Because Absolutely. Because they're sticking in the jobs that they're doing and there's no movement that means people can progress, get promoted, take a new job and then the whole jobs market grinds to a halt. Yeah, it, it absolutely does. And there is also a skilled shortage in lots of different sectors. Um, people have moved around sectors and moved out of sectors and got to other jobs and now those sectors are coming back. We're then finding that we're really struggling to recruit people in, the, in those sectors. And I think employers have to do something different to attract people. People. You need to look at your employer brand. People are questioning and um, want to do something different. They've had so much time to think. I mean, the pandemic's affected us all in different ways. Yeah. And do you think people have just sort of spent that last 18 months thinking, you know what, I'm not in the job that I want to be doing. I'm going to retrain. I'm going to do something else. And that means that maybe some industries that relied on maybe relatively cheap, relatively unskilled labour suddenly find that they don't have that appeal. Yeah, and I think we're seeing wages increase as well. Um, and that's part of it. Um, that work-life balance people are saying I want to do something different oh. I don't want to work till late I don't want to do a shift and actually they've experienced that you can move from sector I think at the beginning of the pandemic people think well I'm, I've done, only experienced tourism or I've only done hospitality and now I realize that actually if you if you're great at what you do and you've got great communication skills you're great at service you can do lots of different jobs and that's really changed the, the whole dynamic of the job market as well yeah, it's really interesting to see how this shakes out, isn't it? Kate, for now, thank, thank you. Thank you very Lovely much. to see thank you. you. Thanks so much. Um, so look, a sense there of sort of what's happening in the jobs market and how difficult it is in some sectors for employers to be able to recruit the right people. And it's also about training. We're talking to the guy who runs this building site here in Huddersfield, and he said actually his problem is, nece is not necessarily a lack of skills, but it's an ageing workforce. People that he's worked with for decades, suddenly getting a little bit older, thinking about retiring, and there's not the new skills that are coming through the system. And maybe it's part of the education problem. Maybe it's that lack of apprenticeship or training opportunities for young people. Or maybe it's about the attractiveness of certain careers that people maybe want to do other things rather than some of the perhaps more traditional industries. But nonetheless, they've not got a shortage here on the site, but across the construction industry, it's a real problem. But I'm going to leave you.
with that glorious view this morning that we have from here in Huddersfield, looking right down the valley. Uh, it's a little windy, it's a little wild, but it is glorious as this train comes over the viaduct. Yeah, it's really lovely view. And thank you very much, 